Good morning. Welcome to worship this morning. It's nice to see you all here. Uh, just a couple of announcements. Those of you who maybe have charter uh, for your email, you didn't get the what's up email, but it wasn't for lack of trying. It kept bouncing back and we have no idea why. Hopefully next week it will be better. So if you're wondering why, that that's it. Uh, Tuesday, no, Monday, Tuesday, we're, well, Tuesday we're serving at Crossroads and The Reach, and tomorrow morning we're making the food. We need just a couple more people for those things. I think one more batch of cookies and another helper in the morning would be great, and a little cleanup on Tuesday. So if you're able to help either one of those days, please check out that sign up or just let me know as well. And then what's coming up this week, I think the big thing is next Saturday. Pastor Janet's ordination is here at 2.30. Uh, you know, we've been calling her Pastor Janet for a couple of years, but it becomes official on Saturday. That's when it's the real deal. And so it will be her ordination service, and then we, as our gift to her as a congregation, we're providing a, a little lunch for her afterwards as well. So if you are able to make it, I know she would be very, very happy to see you. Um, and if you can't make it, but want to catch what an ordination is all about, we're going to be live streaming it as well for, for either Saturday or for later as well. So just want you to know about that. And I have had a couple people ask too, is it appropriate to give gifts or something? Uh, cards and a, a gift if you want to give a gift, but certainly a card or a note of appreciation and encouragement is certainly welcome. So you can do that. Um, and just uh, a note of sympathy to Marsha Madigan, whose sister passed away this week, and of course we still extend our sympathies to the Seuss family as well. I invite you to stand. Oh, I forgot to say hello and welcome to those of you on Facebook. There you are. It's nice to have you here as always, and please say hi back to us as well. The rest of us, let's stand as we are able, and we'll begin worship with confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who creates, redeems, and sustains us and all of creation. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. To you, O God, all hearts are open. To you, all desires known. We come to you confessing our sins. Forgive us in your mercy and remember us in your love. Show us your ways, teach us your paths, and lead us in justice and truth. For the sake of your goodness, in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. By water and the Holy Spirit, God gives you a new birth. And through the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ, God forgives you all your sins. The God of mercy and might strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in eternal life. Amen. The trumpets sound, the angels sing, the feast is ready to begin. The gates of hell are open wide, and Jesus welcomes you inside. Sing with thankfulness songs of pure delight, come and revel in heaven's love and light. Take your place at the table of the King, the feast is ready to begin. The feast is ready to begin. Tables are laden with good things. Oh, taste the peace and joy he brings. He fills you up with love divine. He'll turn your water into wine. Sing with thankfulness songs of pure delight. Come and revel in heaven's love and light. Take your place at the table of the king. The feast is ready to begin. The feast is ready to begin. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. You may be seated. Except we have the canticle of praise, Kim. Some of us can be seated. <laughs> Thank you. Mm -hmm. 
This is the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia, alleluia. This is the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia, alleluia. Worthy is Christ, the Lamb who was slain, whose blood set us free to be people of God. Power, riches, wisdom, and strength, and honor, blessing, and glory are His. This is the feast of victory for our God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. <clears throat> this is a feast of victory for our God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Sing with all the people of God and join in the hymn of all creation, blessing, honor, glory, and might be to God and the Lamb forever. Amen. This is the feast of victory for our God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is the feast of victory for our God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. For the Lamb who was slain has begun His reign. Hallelujah. This is the feast of victory for our God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. This is the peace of victory for our God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Let us pray. Living God, in Christ you make all things new. Transform the poverty of our nature by the riches of your grace. And in the renewal of our lives, make known your glory. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Good morning and pre-Valentine's Day. Happy Valentine's Day. The first reading comes from Psalm 1, and we will read that responsively. Happy are they who have not walked in the counsel of the wicked, nor lingered in the way of the sinners, nor sat in the seats of the scornful. Their delight is in the law of the Lord. And they meditate on God's teaching day. They are like trees planted by streams of water, bearing fruit in due season, with leaves that do not wither. Everything they do shall prosper. It is not so with the wicked. They are like chaff which wind blows away. Therefore the wicked shall not stand upright when judgment comes nor the sinner in the counsel of the righteousness. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked shall be destroyed. The second reading comes from 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 12 through 20. Now if Christ is proclaimed as raised from the dead, how can some of you say there is no resurrection of the dead? 
If there is no resurrection of the dead, then Christ has not been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, then our proclamation has been in vain, and your faith has been in vain. We are even found to be misrepresenting God, because we testified of God that he raised Christ, whom he did not raise, if it is true that the dead are not raised. For if the dead are not raised, then Christ has not been raised. If Christ has not been raised, your faith is futile, and you are still in your sins. Then those also who have died in Christ have perished. If, for this life only, we have hoped in Christ, we are all of people most to be pitied. But, in fact, Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have died. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand as you are able. Alleluia, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus came down with the twelve and stood on a level place with a great crowd of his disciples and a great multitude of people from all Judea, Jerusalem, and the coast of Tyre and Sidon. They had come to hear him and to be healed of their diseases, and those who were troubled with unclean spirits were cured. And all in the crowd were trying to touch him, for power came out from him and healed all of them. Then he looked up at his disciples and said, Blessed are you who are poor. For yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are you who are hungry now, for you will be filled. Blessed are you who weep now, for you will laugh. Blessed are you when people hate you and when they exclude you, revile you, and defame you on account of the Son of Man. Rejoice in that day and leap for joy, for surely your reward is great in heaven, for that is what their ancestors did to the prophets. But woe to you who are rich. For you have received your consolation. Woe to you who are full now, for you will be hungry. Woe to you who are laughing now, for you will mourn and weep. Woe to you when all speak well of you, for that is what their ancestors did to the false prophets. The Gospel of the Lord. You may be seated, and I want to invite the children to come forward. Too. Come on over here. I got Jaren too. That's good. I need all the hands I can get. You got hands. I see that. Come on up. This is Eliza and Lena. Did I get the do I remember right? Um, they're staying with Grandpa Kim. This is Jaren and Jacob. So thanks for coming up today. I, who knows what day it is tomorrow? Carla helped us out there. Valentine's Day. And uh, you already had your party. Are you going to have a party at Grandma and Grandpa's house tomorrow? Or you got to go to school tomorrow? All right. Well, maybe you get a Valentine's party at school. You got the day off. Well, uh, what I have today are some cards. And do you know what that is on there? John 3.16. Do you know what that is? It's a Bible verse. Would you take that Bible over to Jaren, and can the two of you find John 3.16 on there? These are actually going to be... I, I bet you did. So John, yeah, well, more than halfway through. i got to give him... Oh, so you're close when you're Matthew, Mark, Luke. You were in Matthew. There we go, John 3.16. And I have more over here, too, and see how they've got different ones. But I thought I'd have them look these up. What we're going to do is turn these into Valentines. And guess who we're going to give them to? Oh, for God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that everyone who believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. And I Thank you. For God so loved the world, he gave his only son. 
God loved us that much he sent Jesus to die and to be raised again because he loves us. And so that's a valentine from God to us. You want to try one more since you did so well? All right, let me find in Galatians. Just a minute. i got to help Jaron out here. Galatians is going to be behind John. So keep going. Chapter 5. Galatians chapter 5. Yes. I am telling you that. I am. He is God. God. Right. So if you didn't hear Jacob, you want to know if God knew that Jesus was going to die on the cross. Yes, God sent Jesus to the earth to teach us and to die for us. So he knew that was going to happen, and so did Jesus. That's kind of a hard thing to know. So they're going to look up another one. Meanwhile, I'm going to get you guys to work, because what I want you to do is come on over here for a little bit. This is how we're going to do it is I have some stickers. So these are cards with some Bible verses, but they could really use some stickers, I think. So if you would put some stickers on those, and then when you have some, how are you doing? I gave you the hard part. We're going to go way back here. Galatians. You know, if you're a pastor, you're expected to find it quicker. Chapter 5, verses 22 to 26. I cheat. I have a Bible tab. Yeah. Or tabs. Contrast the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generous, rapidly, faithfully, and gentleness, and self control. There is no law against such things. And those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. If we live by the Spirit, let us uh, also be guided by the Spirit. Good. I think think you're good. Okay. Yep. Good. Thank you. Thank you. So those are a couple examples of some of the Bible verses that we're going to give out as Valentine's. Because love ultimately comes from God. God. So, all right. You know what? We got these girls doing a great job of putting some stickers on. And uh, why don't you, once they put the stickers on... Take some of these and pass a few out, all right? I'm going to let you guys work on this for a little while while Kim and I are going to move on to what we got to do next. Kim, is that all right by you? It is. All right, so... you guys are done, go back to Grandma, okay? Yeah. (laughs) You'll remember that last week we introduced Renee as your council president for the coming year and talked about the... um, Scripture reading for the day, Kim is, was kind enough, brave enough, willing enough, whatever the word is, to say yes to being vice president. And so we're going to hear a little bit about that and spend a little time with those blessings and woes as well. Oh, wait, you got to turn yourself on. It's on the side. Sorry about that. I didn't know this was a bring your own bottom pad. I didn't either. This is actually from the worship band. I stole it from them. <laughs> so, so Kim, start out. Let folks here know anything you think they should know about you, and let them know why you did say yes. Uh, and you probably have to hold that microphone closer. Okay. Then. Um, what time is kickoff? No. Um, <laughs> anyway. Uh, What you should know about me is that uh, I have been a member here maybe 16 years. Uh, Been married to that precious person over there for quite a while. And we have two daughters and two granddaughters. Um, I've been riding in a boat that others have been rowing and oaring for years. And they've been directing the good ship Messiah. And I appreciate all they've done. And it's time for me to grab an oar. I think, what was it, two weeks ago there, Peter was in the boat, so a little imagery there yep. for you. Yep. My background, I, my vocation, I worked in advertising for a long, long time. And I, what that, if it brought me any skills or knowledge at all, I have a sense of message and audience and how the two might connect. And so I hope some of that brings some benefit.
to the Good Ship Messiah. I forgot where we could probably take these off too so people can hear us a little better. You're okay with that. Okay, thank you. So let's get into that scripture reading today, (laughs) our gospel from Luke. We wrestled with it for quite a while earlier in the week. That we did. What caught your attention? Several things. Um, Quite often we, we... Our verses are so familiar. We get into the Beatitudes. And what caught me right away was the introduction of the people came from all over to be healed. First things first, they came all over to be healed. And who could do the healing? The carpenter's son, Joseph, the Nazarene. I mean, Jesus, the Nazarene, I'm sorry, Joseph's son. So that was their desire. They wanted, he was their hope. He was the healer. And they came and they were there. And, they, and what, what I notice so often is when I read the Bible or if I'm reading Christ in our home or we're doing our Thursday morning Bible study is the all-inclusive or the superlative, which means when the little word like all and all were healed, all were healed. Then what happened next? Our 15-minute conversation turned into 50 minutes the other day. We won't do that for you today. <laughs> but anyway, um, what, I, what I noticed was those people stayed. Then he preached. They were healed. They stayed. Then he preached. They could have left. Hey, I got healed. The good stuff happened to me. I'm I'm leaving. But they didn't. You know, you when you talked about that earlier in the week, I I heard that, and just now I heard it another way as well, which is I think what one way to look at it is they got healed first, and they could have left, and they stayed. But I also hear it that Jesus healed first to catch their attention, just like he did a week ago with Peter in the boat. He act, Jesus acted first and then taught when their ears were maybe opened. If he had taught them first and then went to heal, would they have heard him as well as they did in this case when he healed first and then spoke? And this little snippet that just happened here is a great thing that happens when you get together with brothers and sisters in Christ, whether it be in a Bible study or just in conversation, and somebody would say, did you think about or did you read it this way? Even if it's four or five words. Hmm. Hmm. And then you get into the who, what, where, and when, and how, and and, and, and you get into the real, the real meaning of, of, the, of the writings. Yeah, the deeper you go, the richer you understand scripture. And I thought even more after we hung up the other day. And one of the phrases we talked about was, um, they were changed. When they were healed, they were changed. And so on one of my 72 drives back and forth to Eden Prairie while we're taking care of the grandkids, um, I changed my mind on that. Again. You can. (laughs) Okay. They weren't changed. They are changed. Okay. Just as we are changed here in our baptism, in the teaching and the preaching and the songs and the fellowship, we are changed. We are changing. Changing. Okay, let's go talk about those blessings and woes because they can mm-hmm. um, needle at you for a while. What do you think? <sighs> well, yeah, the big side. Did you well, hear it? No, no, oh. it's there's. <laughs> You, you can look at this multiple ways, one of which is, you can look at it as viewing it through today's culture, or and, and not just today's culture, but a, an earthly culture. Blessed are the poor, blessed are the, blessed are the. 
Um, I hope that I am able to see things through the eyes of my heart as we are instructed. Okay? So the blessed are the poor, blessed are the meek, blessed are the... They are getting theirs because they seek above. The, uh, the others have earthly goods. And maybe they sought those. We don't know. But it seems that Jesus is implying that they treasure them. And so I, I, I lean, you know, I favor the blessed are the poor and blessed are the meek because they have not here. But heaven has their reward. Have faith. On the other end, woe is, and pastor goes, whoa, 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 to me. She says, have you thought about where we, I, might stand as far as being the rich person? I live a comfortable life. I'm not in any, you know, distress or anything financially or otherwise. And uh, am I leaning too much on my belongings? So is there woe or being, a, being aware of my dependence on my toys? You've got to think about that more often. And so one of the things we talked about a lot is, and this is kind of my last few months' thoughts and my prayer and my Bible life, and just to, is the difference of being a being and doing. We are the children of God. We are chosen. We are blessed. We are loved. What we do sometimes collides with that path that is our, what, who we are. That's called sin. And, but we're still loved, chosen, and children of God. If we can turn, if we can parallel that path, then we're walking a Christ-like life. So that's kind of the, the, you notice in the verse it says, blessed are the poor, blessed are. It's, they are. And, and that, can, that, the, that language is sticking with me. So. I also think, um, you know, you're, differentiation between being and doing. That being is critical to understand what to do. Um, and so, for example, and I think, like, this particular passage, it's sometimes, uh, because I, am as I had said to Kim, I've never wondered where my next meal is coming from. Uh, you know, I have food in my cupboard, and what do I do with that? Well, Jesus doesn't say, become poor. Jesus doesn't say, get rid of your wealth. Um, but he says, if you are in this state, you are blessed. Or if you are in this state, watch out. That woe, we often think of it as a curse. It's not really a curse. It's, it is literally, whoa, stop, you know, watch out. Because uh, you, I think sometimes you can see God more easily when you are in a state of poverty, whether that's you know, physical, financial, emotional, spiritual. State of need, yes. Mm -hmm. A state of need versus a state where you, you hold I, it. I, and you ha I think what you have to do is understand where you are. And whose you are. that does direct what you do. Mm -hmm. um, and so to understand, it's not get rid of in order to become poor. God isn't saying, I want you all to be poor. But God is saying, I see you. And that blessed means I, it's a preferential option in some ways, or you are yeah. favored by me. One of the things I read that I loved was God gives everybody gifts, and the rich have a harder time seeing the gifts of God. And I, I appreciated that. Yeah, I agree. I, uh, you know, I'm, I'm still in, in this thought of being and doing, and so... I'm amazed, and I ran across this sermon a few weeks ago where this pastor was talking about the ordinary things in life and how God has a hand in so many things, and we just don't see them, and, but they're there, and they're so special, and they can, 
and it's God just reaching out to us and 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 all we have to do is is be aware of them and I only watched the sermon three times because it really didn't impress me at all <laughs> by the way if you're a Facebook person and you're on Facebook at home it's a-okay to go back and listen to the readings or listen to Brianna sing a song or listen to Barb play that fantastic piano. That's one of the great things about being online. You can go back and go, ah, Pastor Trish on January 16th said something that I wanted to catch again. So anyway, that's a different subject, but it's a great tool. So I'm um, mindful of the time because we promised we wouldn't spend 50, 50 <laughs> minutes here. I want to go back to uh, just your statement and reiterate it, that all of this is a matter of the heart. Um, and I think if we remember that, where are we? We are probably both poor and rich in many ways. We also move through seasons in our life or phases in our life where we are more poor or more rich for a whole variety of reasons. But it's all a matter of the heart, and I think that's a critical piece. Go ahead. Yeah, I just wanted to get, as we get close to wrapping up here, it's amazing how God puts things right in front of you after you, it comes to your mind or your heart. And, and then, so it, I think it was in Christ in Her Home. By the way, if there's any Christ in Her Homes in the basket out there, there's such a treasure. You don't have to read the whole Bible. Read three, four verses a day and then the commentaries by pastors and, and, and terrific uh, lay people. But from the book of Jeremiah, um, we talked about where do you find your hope? Where do you find your hope? There are shootings in the Twin Cities all the time. And people are, where are they finding their hope? Is life that hopeless that you have to take another life? So from the book of Jeremiah, this is what the Lord says. Cursed are those who put their trust in mere humans and turn their hearts away from the Lord. They are like stunted shrubs in the desert with no hope for the future. They will live in the barren wilderness on salty flats where no one lives. But blessed are those who trust in the Lord and have made the Lord their hope and confidence. They are like trees planted along a river bank with roots that reach deep into the water. Such trees are not bothered by the heat or worried by long months of drought. Their leaves stay green. They go right on producing luscious fruit. That came right up the next day. On the, Anyway, I think God is cool. And go back to Psalm 1 and read about the tree there as yeah. well. And uh, hope and trust in the Lord. Amen. Amen. Please thank Kim for his time with us today.
Because you, Lord, in deep compassion Heal the sick and free the soul By your Spirit send your power To our world to make it whole As we worship grant a vision to your love's revealing light In its height and depth and greatness Dawns upon our quickened sight Making known our needs and burdens Your compassion bids us bear Stirring us to ardent service and in life to share Called by worship to your service And for your name we go To the child, the youth, the aged Love and living deeds to show, hope and health, goodwill and comfort, consolate and peace we give, that your servants, Lord and freedom, may your mercy ordinate. I invite you to stand as you are able. Together, let us confess our faith, and we will use the Epiphany Creed that is found in your bulletin. I believe in God, the creator of the universe, who spoke, let there be light, and there was light, setting in motion all of creation and blessing it to this day. I believe in Jesus Christ, the light of the world that shines in the darkness. The darkness cannot overcome it. He embodied humanity in the image of God. In kindness, truthfulness, humility, and devotion, he suffered for the greater good. He was and is the Son of God. He died on the cross for us, God's saving grace. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the guiding light of God in our world. Through his Spirit, God penetrates and reveals the darkness of human sin, helps people grow and become the people they are meant to be. I believe in the power of transformation through God's spirit and light here in this world and in the world to come. Amen. The spirit of the Lord is poured out upon us in abundance, so we are bold to pray for the church, the world, and all that God has made. Blessed are those whose trust is in you. Strengthen the faith of those who profess your name and bring reassurance to those who doubt or fear. Through your church, speak continued blessing into the world. God of grace, hear our prayer. Those who trust in you are like trees planted by streams of water. Bless fruit trees with an abundant harvest, protect rainforests from destruction, restore land that has eroded after deforestation. Resurrect woodlands after forest fires. God of grace, hear our prayer. Search the hearts of those who govern, that they lead with humility. Inspire leaders to collaborate on policies that protect people and the planet. Sustain truth tellers and social movements that challenge society to become more honest and just. God of grace, hear our prayer. Send your blessings of mercy upon those who long for consolation. Tend to those struggling with poverty, unemployment, or uncertainty. Provide for all who hunger. Console those who face persecution. And grant peace to all who suffer. Today we remember especially Ben and Craig, Dave, Earl, and Judy, Rosie and Nancy, Dick, Milt, Dolores, and Sharon, Jason, Dan, Jim, and Sharon, Jessica, Millie, Daryl, Ellie, and Arthur, Suzanne, Cheech, Tom, Jerry, Pam, and Morgan, and those we now name in our hearts. God of grace, hear our prayer. 
Renew this congregation in our shared mission. As we plan and dream for the future you are preparing, inspire us by the examples of Martin Luther and all reformers. Bless new projects and new ministry partnerships. God of grace, hear our prayer. Since we have such great hope in your promises, O God, we lift these and all our prayers to you in confidence and faith through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. You may be seated. Scott, as he brings the offering forward, we give a word of thanks uh, for the opportunity to give of ourselves in so many ways, in, in person, in our prayers, in our deeds, and in our financial gifts. And so we give thanks for that ability, and we give thanks for being able to continue to carry out the ministry as well here at Messiah. And as we give thanks, we also then now come to the table to be fed and nourished and strengthened. On the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup and gave thanks, gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Together, we pray the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. The table is prepared. All are welcome. together on our knees. Let us break bread together on our knees. When I fall on my knees with my face to the rising sun, oh Lord, have mercy.
May the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace now and always. Amen. I invite you to stand as you are able for the blessing and our sending song. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. And the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. God of hope go with you every day into a world of need of joys of joy and peace. May the God of justice speed us on our way, bringing light and hope to every land and race. Praying, let us look for peace, singing, share our joy with all. When we hear Christ call, go with Christ into a weary world and share the good news.